I just gotta find that damn song. There it is. Sister, and you go through puberty. You think you might be pagan, and you want community. You meet a sex magician, he tells you how it will be. And he claims that the door is locked, and he only has the key. He claims that he's an elder, but he's only 33. He's got Mary Mead, he married Pacha Legs to Blessed Be. He says you best get used to it, it's part of our religion. You think he might be full of shit, but you're a trusting pigeon. He brings you to a circle and the priest gives you a shoving. Says we like polyamory and lots of carnal loving. So if you fuck my friends and me, we'll let you in our coven. And if you want a family, we'll put one in your oven. Which one? Which door? Which one? Bitch saw? Which one? Bitch saw? Is he a lady conqueror or just a soldier in a witch war? Enough grief from Christian right wing preachers. We shouldn't have to bite each other like some feral creatures. I hear there's trouble brewing with the Voodons and the Wiccans. They're sacrificing values instead of little chickens. And some folks scan the New Age kids because they're easy pickings. A bunch of pagan characters right out of Charles Dickens. But I thought being pagan meant we all should get along. And that every path has value and there is no right or wrong. But every time there's power, there are always those who grab it. Someone comes along and takes a whack at Lori Cabot. Some other fool shoots back like Emma Fudd out hunting wabbits. They end up coming off like Lou Costello and Bud Abbott. Which one? Kitch score? Which one? Niche de jour? Which one? Switch more? You know I ain't no carnivore. I ain't got stomach for a witch war. I know a couple women who were married to each other And they were polyamorous and soon they found another And then a jealous friend of the third woman's exes Started raising bad juju and casting nasty hexes So everyone found out just what power over sex is Ripping at each other like Tyrannosaurus Rexes So free from harm must only be the law And if you've got a problem with that sticking in your craw Then maybe you're a power monger trying hard to squeeze us And you will not be welcome here until your witch war ceases And everybody must be free to do as he, she pleases No matter if they follow Satan, Buddha, Bob, or Jesus Witch war, witch war, witch war, snitch war, witch war Trapped us in a witch war Witch war Are you a big predator? Witch war Tell me what's it all for Witch war Hey, who's minding the store? I can't take it anymore Better quit it with your witch war Right up at night. At 
Give me a T. T. Give me an R. R. Give me an E. T. Give me an A. A. Give me an S. S. Give me an O. o. Give me an N. N. What's that spell? Treason. <laughs> What's that spell? Treason. One more time. Treason. <laughs> You're all gonna get arrested. <laughs> <laughs> My name is John Riley. I'll have your ear only a while. I left my dear home in Ireland. It was death, starvation, or exile. When I got to America, it was my duty to go. Enter the army and slog across Texas to join in the war against Mexico. And it was there in the Pueblos and hillsides that I saw the mistake I had made. Part of a conquering army with the morals of a bayonet blade. And there amidst all these poor dying Catholics, screaming children, the burning stench of it all, myself and 200 Irishmen decided to rise to the call from Dublin City to San Diego we witnessed freedom denied so we formed the St. Patrick Battalion and we fought on the Mexican side we formed the St. Patrick Battalion and we fought on the Mexican side we marched neath the green flag of St. Patrick emblazoned with Erin Gobra Bright with the harp and the shamrock And libertad para mexicana Just fifty years after Wolf Tone Five thousand miles away The Yanks called us a legion of strangers And they can talk as they may But from Dublin City to San Diego We witnessed freedom denied 
So we formed the St. Patrick Battalion And we fought on the Mexican side We formed the St. Patrick Battalion And we fought on the Mexican side We fought them in Matamoros where their volunteers were raping the nuns. In Monterey and Cerro Gordo, we fought on as Ireland's sons. We were the red-headed fighters for freedom amidst these brown-skinned women and men. Side by side, we fought against tyranny, and I dare say we'd do it again. From Dublin City to San Diego, we witnessed freedom denied, so we formed the St. Patrick Battalion, and we fought on the Mexican side. We formed the St. Patrick Battalion, and we fought on the Mexican side. them in five major battles. Churubusco was the last. Overwhelmed by the cannons from Boston, we fell after each mortar blast. Most of us died on that hillside in the service of the Mexican state. So far from our occupied homeland, we were heroes and victims of fate. From Dublin City to San Diego, we witnessed freedom denied, so we formed the St. Patrick Battalion, and we fought on the Mexican side. From Dublin City to San Diego, we witnessed freedom denied, so we formed the St. Patrick Battalion, and we fought on the Mexican side. We formed the St. Patrick Battalion, and we fought on the Mexican side. David Grovich on Wither Shins. And we hear Bad Religion for that. Uh, the David Halmore Orchestra, or Derek Halmore Orchestra, uh, with Witch Wars and the Wither Shins theme song before that. But... Yeah, just think about that, that song right there, man. There's some real tyranny for you and some good treason. I saw a guy uh, arguing with somebody the other day, and he happened to be Irish. said, you know, if you don't like it here, go home. And it occurred to me, when the Irish came here, they didn't want to come here. Um, well, a lot of them were indentured servants, but they had to come here because, um, well, at least all of the men. The men had to come here uh, because there wasn't enough food. In fucking Ireland, because they're fucking Catholics, they overpopulated their goddamn island and had to send the excess over here. Uh, like it said in the beginning of the song, "Death, Starvation, or Exile." Um, the Irish never really wanted to come to America. They just kind of had to. At least uh, the men. There were no jobs. There was no food. They kind of had to come here. And when they came here, they went immediately into the fucking army, <laughs> not even knowing who or what they were fighting for. Ah. But that's taking me way back. Tonight we're talking about the, uh, uh, the 2021 in review. It's uh, 2022 now, January 5th, because fuck you, 2021. Um, what a bullshit year we had. Yes. You know, maybe it wasn't as bad as 2020, but a close second. Mm -hmm. Here we are going back and forth from fucking locking down to unlocking to locking down to unlocking. I got to see... Um, people's faces around town for about a week or so and then the mask went back on because uh, people are stupid i think it was in uh, 2020 around this time when they came up with the vaccine and still we can't get enough americans to take the fucking vaccine 
But our kid now has a vaccine, so I have zero fucks about the rest of y'all. And I will say, I just read some statistics today for New Orleans specifically. Mm. We have 92.2 of our adults have at least the first shot. And as far as both shots, it's about 80%. Mm -hmm. And for kids, is also lower like it is in the rest of the country hopefully people i don't know i guess there's some hesitation with pe even vaccinated people vaccinating their own kids which, mm -hmm. which we did as soon as it became available but hopefully that'll catch up yeah. but 92.2 percent of this town is ha at least has one shot well if you think about it to you know to the rest of the country the rest of the world anybody that's visited new orleans um, the last thing that you would think is that the people of New Orleans are responsible. Yeah. You know? They're doing Dancing and drinking duty. in the streets every fucking day, celebrating every goddamn thing. They were celebrating yeah, the holiday, Wednesday before Our holiday season January. is not over. No. Everybody else's holiday season is over. Oh, just Ours is just getting started. Tomorrow is the first day of Carnival. Which 12th is, night. 12th, yeah, mm -hmm. which... Um, you know, culminates in Mardi Gras. I mean, the whole thing is called Mardi Gras, but it it starts on January 6th. Can you explain to us what the fuck Twelfth Night is? Because I don't even understand. I, I was reading about it. I don't remember exactly what it is. But about a lot the 12 of, Days of Christmas thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It has to do with the 12 Days of Christmas. And other countries celebrate it. We talked to a, a friend of ours who's from Mexico and they get king cakes also, yep. and, and they celebrate it. And they and they have a baby in the king yep. cake also. We're picking our king cake up tomorrow. Somebody else told me that uh, in, in Quebec, they also celebrate it. So it's not just New Orleans. Yeah. So if you, if you don't know, a king cake, uh, some of them are sweet, some of them are savory. Um, you only eat them during carnival or the saints will lose. And the rest of the town will be mad at you if you do that. Um, and there's a little plastic baby somewhere in the cake. So one per if you if you buy an entire cake, one person is gonna get the baby. Yeah. And it's supposed to be good luck. I, I've heard different things that you know, good luck, and then you're like the the queen or the king of the night. Mm -hmm. And uh, what was the other one? I heard about something else. If you get the baby. So if I get the I baby, I get to be king. For a day. For a day. Yeah. Well, king for a day wasn't really a something that you ever wanted to have it meant that the next day you got sacrificed but yeah. you know maybe they don't do that here yeah i'm not sure yet i haven't know. been here that long um and this is our first time ordering an entire king cake usually we just get it by the slice and i've see personally seen plenty of people end up with the baby mm -hmm. but we've never gotten one and we're going crawfish 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 king, cake, king cake for our yep. first king cake of the season yeah um we're having it for very, dinner tomorrow yep very important thing around here. King oh. cakes. Yeah. They seem to have off-season king cakes that don't have the baby in them. I don't understand yeah. that yet. Which we, we don't we don't eat it, but I well, guess Well, we did because the bakery around our Well, that, our house, that was an like, exception. Yeah, yeah, yeah. During when the power was out for 11 days after Hurricane uh, Ida. Yeah. Um, they were handing out king cakes. Yeah. And we ate all those king cakes and never ran into a baby, so different king cakes somehow. Well, they didn't give you a whole one. Oh, they did. They gave oh, you they three did. whole king cakes. Yeah. Okay, yeah. So I yeah. guess they stopped putting the baby. I mean, in. Eventually, you know, it had been you know sitting there for so long. I think I gave the the last the half dogs. to the dogs. Yeah, they dug it. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> <sighs> but yeah, so uh, a, a thing that's come out lately with the with the vaccine, and I, I figured this, but I hadn't seen any actual statistics. But um, as you might imagine, it's the red states. All of the highest um, COVID numbers in the country and lowest vaccination numbers are in the red states. Um, recently, Trump endorsed the the vaccine, uh, but rather got booed. Yeah, rather than than uh, that encouraging his followers that usually follow him like a cult leader, um, now they're all mad at him. Yeah, about it. He's done it twice. Yeah. When he had that tour with Bill O'Reilly, mm -hmm. they had talked about whether or not they had gotten boosted or mm -hmm. something like that. So this, you know, this blue blue tidal wave. <laughs> I will. I will <laughs> going to take over the red states. I will say California is a blue state, and their cases are out of control as yeah. well. So. Well, you know, 
if you get a, a state with a large population, of course, that's going to happen. Yeah. But, you know, so they do a per capita thing. So it's like higher per capita in the red states. Um, but the red states are the least populated, too. <laughs> the red states make the least money, too, on the average. And rely uh, on what they profess to hate, government handouts. Welfare. Yep. Yeah. Socialism. Medicaid. Yeah, without socialism, um, they'd be nothing. They'd be gone. And, and still some of them keep talking about uh, uh, seeding from the union. Uh, and it's always the states that don't have enough uh, gross domestic product to survive um, that do that. It's and like, some of them don't even know. have water. I mean, without California, most of you would be dead. Yeah. Most of the food's coming from California, like it or not. <laughs> And then Florida's cases are out of control. Did the governor ever come back from uh, vacation during the, I the worst heard of fucking COVID? About what he's doing lately. Yeah. Now we got the Omicron, which is way more transmissible. Um, uh, so far, less deadly. So that that's the silver lining. Yeah, yeah. Not as many. I mean, as far as I know, it might have gone up by now. But as far as I go. know, <laughs> only two people have died, which is nothing. Uh, somebody, the first person I think was in Germany, was in Germany. second person, I think, I think, I don't know, I want to say California, but I'm not sure, but very, very few cases with deaths. Mm -hmm. So that's the good thing about it. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, you know, I learned something the other day what? and you probably already heard it, but act like you didn't. Oh. Um, according to Trump supporters, the Arizona audit proved election fraud what? and that Trump um, was really president, even though the actual statistics from the Arizona audit show 800 and some odd votes more for Biden. Trump lost well, 800 votes after the Republican. What I want to know <laughs> is if all these people think that Trump is still the president, why are they blaming Biden for the gas prices? Yeah, I just, I <laughs> literally just saw one of those on TikTok that, that Biden's not really president. Trump's really been running the thing. Biden's been dead. Um, they killed him. I don't, I don't know how they explain who this person is that keeps talking to us on the TV all the time. Um, they don't, they don't mention that. It's probably CGI. It's probably, uh, what's that fake, uh, deep fake. It's deep fake by the deep state. Um, <laughs> Trump's really a president, but they're all like, well, let's stop. blame Biden for yeah. the gas, which isn't the um, president's nothing to do with the president. It, it anyway. is. It isn't. And um, but, well, again, you know, this is a problem that we've ran into, you know, for five plus years now. Uh, one side of the equation can't do math or read. Um, it took me t 10 seconds to find a graph of gas prices. Um, and they were highest, um, you know, for like five presidents or so, highest during Obama. But the highest they got was um, under four bucks, mm -hmm. under four bucks. So um, it always happens around Christmas. Um, we didn't have demand for gas, so it went really low during Trump. Um, but it swung up to right where it was. It's like, it's, it's like these people don't have a memory. Yeah, maybe, before COVID, under Trump, gas prices were pretty high. Yeah, yeah, before COVID, <clears throat> you know, and they always go up around holiday season every fucking time. I hear just these ignorant fucks. Because a lot of people are driving. Yeah, and they're gonna go up. I heard a guy um, on TikTok the other day he said um, the uh, Democrats' big plan is that we're flooding the um, country with new voters. We've we've swung open the borders. And we're letting everybody in south of the border and uh, uh, registering them all to vote. And he said, prove me wrong. I said, that's not how this works. And I went and looked it up just to make sure the Oxford rules for debates. Like if you make the claim, yep. you have to prove the claim. Yep. Then others come up with evidence to refute your claim. And you go back and forth. These are the rules of debate accepted but uh, up until days, now. these days, a lot of the Trumpers, when you ask them, like, okay, can you cite your source for this yeah. outrageous claim? They're like, I'm not going to do the research for you. Yeah. You're just being lazy. Do your own do research. Do your own research. It's like, no, the onus is on you. <laughs> To prove yourself if you're making this claim. Well, and I got to say, you know, typically when I run into one of these fucking people and I go and I do my own research, it's just Google. But I look at the sources that come up. 
You know, it's usually usually up around the top. You know, you scroll down. The further you scroll down, the the less reliable sources you get. But I just Google shit and can refute their claims immediately within seconds every fucking but then, time. But they have an answer for that. They're like, yeah. oh, don't use Google. You have to yeah. use DuckDuckGo. Or yeah, well, and, and that's the thing. DuckDuckGo doesn't change your search results. It's just not tracked. That's their only yep. thing. And I, I don't really care that Google's tracked me. There's been a few times that... Uh, you know, Google's heard me talking about a product I want, and then they throw up the page so I can buy the fucking thing. Hey, give me convenience or give me death, man. Of course, the commercial organizations are going to track you to send you or to sell you more shit. This is a fucking America. <laughs> this is what it's all about. I'm not saying that's good, but we, we're, we're in it now, so we might as well roll with it. But um, you don't get different results on DuckDuckGo than you do on Google. And it's never... Google that's a source. It's I Google and I see a source, you know, uh, Washington Post or, you know, New York Times or fucking Reuters, um, something like that. Uh, and I consider those reliable sources because they have been since the dawn of news media in this country. You know, the, the time honored, respected uh, Pulitzer Prize winning journalism, you know, all of those fucking people. Um, um yeah, CNN. CNN's never been um, proven to be a disreputable source. They just are pretty open with their dislike for fucking Trump. <laughs> but he started it. Yeah. He started it. How many times, you know, is somebody going to call you an enemy of the people and then your family's going to get death threats because uh, you're out there doing your fucking job? Eventually, you're going to take that shit personally. Just saying. <laughs> yep. He started that shit. He started the, with the media, the, the whole thing. Mm -hmm. Democrats, the enemy of the people. Um, but the thing is, here we are in 2021. We still got to be talking about that bitch boy. 2022. I'm sorry, 2000, <laughs> 2022. Well, in 2021, we shouldn't have had to talk about him anymore. I know, I know. The motherfucker won't go away. His fucking yep. people won't go away. They're fucking delusional. They think he's fucking still president. Um and yeah, that thing about the, the Arizona audits and then all these other audits that, I mean, the Arizona audits didn't turn up shit. Other audits barely even fucking they happened. They said it, it was... And they, nothing, nothing yeah. was found to support these fucking claims. And there's still, um, I still see people all the time. Yeah, I believe there was voter fraud. It's like, why do you believe that? Because your dictator your repeated it over and over and over again, like Goebbels to told Hitler to do. Goebbels taught Hitler how to do that. You repeat a lie enough times, it becomes truth. This is fucking Hitler tactics that he's using. And we've got enough stupid fucking Americans falling for this shit. Yeah. I just, I'm just embarrassed. I mean, I remember when, when Trump was president, you know, people would, you know, when they travel abroad, they'd say they were Canadian. Um, mm -hmm. Even fucking more so now. I wouldn't want to go anywhere on this fucking earth and tell anybody I'm a fucking American. They just like look at you and shake their heads, man. It's like, really? <laughs> but the Trumpers think that now we're an embarrassment to the world because of Biden. It's like, no, the world is actually relieved that we have Biden. Well, you know, we took a few weeks off here. And in that time, there was a time when Tucker Carlson came on and defended Russia against Ukraine. Said, Russia's just trying to secure their borders. It's like, no, they're trying to secure the borders from the land that they stole from Ukraine the last time they invaded. You know, if you steal somebody's land and move your fucking border, that's not your fucking border. So the, the, the was eastern or western border of Russia right now is at the Crimea, which they stole from fucking Ukraine. So it's not their border. It should, should at least be disputed. It's kind of like... Kind of like the world just kind of let that fucking happen. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm still just blown away by that. We, we, you know, and now Russia's bitching about, um, you know, their sovereignty and they're, they're worried about NATO getting too close to them. It's like, I recall NATO being started because Russia, because the USSR was swallowing up yeah, every small you know, republic that they fucking could. Dictate yeah. who gets into <laughs> NATO. <laughs> Don't get NATO any closer. Well, fuck you. You wouldn't have to get fucking closer if you weren't the only country on earth still invading its fucking neighbors. <clears throat> Where does that happen? Africa? Maybe maybe South America? I, I don't even know if that's happened in South America in our fucking lifetime. I don't know if it's A, a country invading now. another country? Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> 
Ah, man. So here we are. Um, it's the day before the anniversary of Losers on Parade. And uh, Trump was supposed to have a news conference, uh, which he canceled the other day. Uh, we found out that he canceled his conference. And all these people are speculating on why he canceled it. But I heard a story, I read a story that sounded the most plausible. Um, some of his advisors told him that the media, not much of the media is going to cover. I mean, maybe like, you know, Fox News or whatever, but... But the mainstream media isn't going to cover it. Yeah. And that, that's why he canceled it. Yeah. Anyway, what other ex-presidents hold news conferences at the regular? To commemorate the, what yeah. everybody else is looking at as a, more of a day of mourning the than anything else? The deadly insurrection. The, and he was going to celebrate The it? attempt to destroy democracy in the United States. And he was going to have a celebration. It's like, that was, you know, I think people were advising him. It's like, you know... This is a really bad look for you. The January 6th committee has just uncovered your your involvement in the fucking plot. Mm -hmm. And the fucking evidence is mounting and it's large and it's huge. And then he just recently went to the Supreme Court to try and <laughs> complain to the Supreme Court that the January 6th committee is trying to uncover criminal culpability on Trump for January 6th, which is... The their point. job. That's the point. You know, if they found criminal culpability, it's their job to pursue that. Um, now we know that all of the people that McCarthy, all the Republicans that McCarthy tried to put on the committee, they're all involved. We mm -hmm. knew that before. Yeah. We knew that before. But now the evidence has come out. Every one of the motherfuckers that he wanted on that committee, and that's why Pelosi wouldn't let them be on the committee, because yep. she knew they were going to be suspects. And they were just going to try and monkey wrench the fucking well, at committee. At the very least, <laughs> she knew they weren't going to be objective. Yeah, at the very least. Mm. They all have a lot to hide. Yeah. And I'm still not letting go of, you know, Ukraine. And, and, uh... The quid pro quo the, thing? Well, no, the, the, the two guys, um... Lev Parnas. Lev Parnas. Igor something. Yeah. Now, what we found out then... Uh, during that, I think it was during Trump's first impeachment, is that these two Ukrainians were um, laundering money from foreign sources into Republican uh, candidates' campaigns. We, we know that to be a fact. It uh, hasn't been harped on quite enough. Um, but right away, we see the people resisting these investigations we see these people um resisting the january 6th thing um all the, all the way down even mcconnell mcconnell took some of that money i'm fucking telling you we're gonna find out um every one of those motherfuckers took foreign fucking money into their campaigns and that's why they resisted i don't it so know much. how they did it but they they live in florida and they speak perfect english so yeah. I, don't, I don't know that they represent ukraine no 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 they're ukrainians but, yeah. funneling foreign right. money including ukrainian money right. um, and russian money into republicans uh, campaigns we also know um, now it's come out in recent months um, that Russia absolutely um, hacked our 2016 election. Um, the only question was whether Trump colluded or not. And I don't fucking care because he knew and he accepted the help. He accepted the help of our sworn fucking enemies um, and he knew better. That's why he asked Russia to, to find uh, uh, Hillary's emails. And why did they do that, you ask? Well, we all know why they did that. Because Trump's an idiot. Trump's unstable. The Russians saw that and saw somebody that could be played and could be turned into a Russian agent. Um, that's what we had. We had a Russian agent as president for four fucking years. And we're still fucking dealing with it. He's still not fucking in jail. He's still not in prison. <laughs> what a country. <laughs> So what other bullshit came up in 2021? <sighs> There's Delta, the variant of um, uh, COVID that was uh, killing kids. Yep. Still, they didn't want to get vaccinated. Yep. Still, they didn't want their kids to get vaccinated. Yeah. That is one thing disappointing. The, the child vaccination rates in New Orleans are not that good. And I would hope that they would be because... We've done really well with yeah. vaccinations. They're better than other yeah. places. Um, 
they I don't remember the exact number, but I heard the other day that it was either 15 or 25% of eligible kids have been vaccinated. Here, <coughs> excuse me, here it's more like 40, mm -hmm. so we're still doing better than the national average. Mm -hmm. And I'm hoping that that'll catch up because that number it has been getting higher yeah. steadily. So on uh, January 1st, New Orleans medical marijuana patients uh, started being able to buy flour. Yep. Um, our medical marijuana patients could only get like vapes and edibles and shit like yep. that. Um, no flour. Now, and you know what? It, they're immediately huge lines everywhere at all the dispensaries. Yeah. And shit's going from $10 a gram to $18 a gram. And... People are oh. bitch. People are bitching about the price. It's like, what? you know, if you can find ten dollars a gram at a dispensary, so that would I be, paid more on the street. Ten dollars a gram <laughs> is like thirty-five dollars an eighth. Yeah, I used to really pay like good. twenty bucks a gram on the average. You know, buying on the street yeah. from random fucking people. Yeah. Um, it's still fucking better. <laughs> the prices are still better than the black fucking market. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, Tough. people were complaining about that. I mean, you know, 18 bucks, you know, maybe that's a little much for most people. But, people, but 20 bucks a gram was pretty average. Maybe was they like, can't do the math and, and figure out, okay, if it's 10 bucks yeah. a gram, that means 35 bucks an eighth. Yeah. But and maybe it's, people aren't doing the math. And it's been like close to 20 years since I was buying it on the fucking street, you know? Yeah. And it's like, you know, 10 bucks a gram would have been great. I'd be going, really? Shit, give me a pound, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, let's see. Um, what else happened? It's staying lighter a little bit longer. Staying lighter a little bit. We're. Uh, I noticed, you know, with back in the darker days when we were going on at five o'clock our time, it was already dark. Yeah, I don't know if we first learned the term in 2021, but a weather condition called an atmospheric river, where it just dumps on you. Uh, a friend of ours from California told us the other day that they're not in the drought anymore because of that atmospheric river. That's the second time in my lifetime California has been out of the fucking drought. But then, now there's a new one. This one uh, had to have been in 2021 because I never heard of it before. An atmospheric lake where it just like kind of sits over you and just dumps even more and more and more and more rain. Um, here in New Orleans, we have a new one that I never heard of. It's called an atmospheric roller coaster. <laughs> We went from 74 one day, or no, it was like 80 something, to like 50, then 40 at night. And got in the 30s. And then, night. yeah, by the next night, it was like in the 30s. We had to start bringing plants in and shit so they didn't fucking freeze to death, uh, cover the other plants. Yep. Um, and now, now we're on the upswing. Yep. We were like um, upper 60s today. I think tomorrow is supposed to be in the 70s. Today. Yeah. But so it, it, it kind of fluctuates. Back and forth, back it's it's going to be nicer for a week, and then it'll get colder again, yeah. like with highs in the fifties. Mm -hmm. um, so it just fluctuates. Yeah. I don't know if it does that here every year, but mm -hmm. I was really surprised. Um, our first winter here, I was really surprised by how but cold it was. Mm -hmm. Louisiana, you just you always you think of the the heat. You never think that it gets cold, yeah. but it gets pretty yeah. cold. Last year we had some pipes freeze. Yeah. yeah. We had like put a blow dryer on them and shit. Yeah. And that's after doing the trickle water thing all night that people told us to do. Mm -hmm. um, I, I don't know if anything froze that night, but you know, this, this last time there was a freeze warning. And so I did the trickle water mm -hmm. thing. I at least did it like in the back, like the only pipes that actually froze mm -hmm. in, the, in the kitchen, mm -hmm. basically. And just, you know, you got to like have the water running in a trickle all night yeah, to keep it from fucking freezing. Yeah, I think the upstairs is okay. Yeah. Because it, it is warmer up there. Yeah, yeah. But I, th I think, well, the thing is, there's pipes under the house. That's how they get cold. Mm. There's pipes in the house don't freeze so much. The pipes have I think, I would think that's how they work. Mm. But, um, yeah, what else happened last year besides the, the obvious disasters that we had with COVID? Um, you know, we had Hurricane Ida over here. We were... We lost power we for 11 days. Mm -hmm. We were the last area of New Orleans to get the power back. Mm -hmm. um, but we did it. We did it. Most of our... Everybody, all of our neighbors evacuated. All of our friends who live here, except one, 
evacuated. Everybody evacuated. Yeah. This is our second hurricane season. We stayed. Yep. Yep. And uh, yeah, the worst part was the power outage. Yep. It was like, you know, it was scary, you know, through the day and part of the night while the hurricane was happening, but um, we were okay. You know, the house didn't get, you know, damaged or anything. Yep. Um, yeah, we just stayed inside and heard the crazy shit going on outside. Mm -hmm. <coughs> and get ready to start all over again in a couple months. Well, it's great not having the power. No, the one silver lining is um, our son is very much into electronics and technology, and so he wouldn't be able to have his phone. Like his phone would, you know, run out, and then you'd have to go in the car to charge it. Mm -hmm. And he was just so pissed off about it. But then we'd have to, he'd have to hang out with us. And our son is a funny motherfucker. Yeah, he is. So funny. Like, we, he joked about stuff and talked to me yeah. about stuff that I've <coughs> never heard before. And he's just Mr. Personality. Yeah. So I, I, like, I appreciated not having power for that. By day 11, that wasn't even really a huge issue when phones would die and stuff. It's like we were just hanging out. Mm -hmm. We spent all of our time outside. Yep. Um, yeah, it was in family the, time. this was in the summer and it was at, there was a breeze outside so it was actually cooler to be sitting outside than to be sitting inside, you know, with no AC. So we spent all of our time until it started getting dark, we'd yeah. be inside outside. Mm -hmm. We had um we had plans apparently there's this big thing uh Christmas carols in the French Quarter. Yeah. And we were going to go watch that, but then the, the Omicron thing started happening. We was like, nah, let's not go be packed in sort of, uh, like sardines with a bunch of strangers. And, and people tourists. are people <laughs> are caroling, so obviously they, they're, they you know, not going to be wearing a mask, which yeah. the, makes sense because mm -hmm. they're caroling. But, uh, yeah, just not, not willing to take that risk. Yeah. Then their uh, New Year's Eve, we canceled that too. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Um, we, you know, Marta doesn't call herself an anarchist, but I've often said, um, to quote the immortal words of Utah Phillips, an anarchist is anybody that doesn't need a cop oh. to tell them what to do. Okay, yeah, I'm definitely an anarchist. Yeah, and we started, we, we stayed home before they ordered people to stay home. Yep. We wore masks before they ordered people to wear masks. Can you turn on those lights when you go in there? In here? Yeah, just both switches. Um, we got vaccinated before it became a vaccine mandate. We have a vaccine mandate here in New Orleans. You can't do shit. You know, don't come here. <laughs> don't bring your cooties to New Orleans. You can't go in hardly anywhere. They're going to check you at the fucking door. And they're hardcore about it. Um, you got to have your vaccine and have your fucking vaccine passport. Um, and you'll be wearing a mask. When, at least when you're inside. Well, again, you know, who saw New Orleans as being the responsible people? All right. Well, we're going to have kind of a short show tonight, um, but let me play you a song. We'll be right back. My tail, it's the beta, prime time, primo, rhyme time, crime, like no other in this lifetime. White House killer, dead in life lines, broke this joke out, or die trying, unprecedented, demented, many presidented, Nazi, Gestapo, dictator, defendant. It's not what you think, it's what you follow. Run for them jewels, drink from that bottle. Another four years, gonna gut your hollow, gun it out, dried up, broken, can't borrow. Union, shut the fuck up. Sorry, I'm <laughs> stay away from me. Stay to the union, shut the fuck up. Sorry, I'm <laughs> stay away from me. Stay to the union, shut the fuck up. Sorry, I'm <laughs> stay away from me. Stay to the union, shut the fuck up. Sorry, I'm <laughs> stay away from me. Mister, I am the law, and you are not. In fact, I'm God. I got a lot. Mr. V's United Breaks take over, come over. Orange hair, fear the comb over. 
over. Here's another scare. Keep them hands in the air. Better not breathe. You dare not dare. Don't say nothing. Don't think nothing. Make America great again. The middle just love it. When he want to talk, walk y'all straight to them ovens. Human beings of color. Yeah, we be suffering. The state of the union. Shut the fuck up. Sorry, I'm... Not some USFL, not a f game I did, I mentioned his name. Operation 45, yeah, it's the same thing. Sounds like Berlin burning, same thing. History's a mystery, if y'all ain't learning. In this clown show for real estate bozo, Nazi call 45, Gestapo. State of the Union, shut the f up, sorry. I Public Enemy on Wittershins Radio. I think that's about 2020 when that song came out. It must have been before Flavor Flav got kicked out of the band. <clears throat> I still can't believe that happened. And what, did he refuse to get a vaccine or what was it? Uh, I, have, I don't know if it had anything to do with the COVID. I'm not sure. Yeah. I don't remember. <clears throat> hmm. I don't remember what the fuck it was. But yeah, um, always loved uh, Public Enemy, but just like without Flavor Flav's like kind of almost comedy hype man, it's just not Public Enemy. Yeah, it's another hip hop band. Yeah, so I, I haven't heard anything from him since then. I, can't I haven't either. I actually yeah. forgot that he got kicked out until you just mentioned. Yeah. It. So uh, I don't know. What's I mean, who knows? They, they may have worked it out since then. I'm not yeah. sure. But um, coming up on Wittershins in the next couple of weeks, we have to start interviewing um, yeah. the people from WitchCon. Yep. And we're also going to be doing a new thing coming up um, uh, in the near future, uh, probably around the same time. Um, TikTok witches. There's some, some people out there teaching some interesting shit on TikTok. Um, and somebody suggested that we start uh, showcasing some of those people. Yeah. And so I'm gonna I'm gonna put out the word on my TikToks. You can find me at Uncle Birch three, Uncle Birch four. <laughs> uh, and you had to keep making new ones. And Witch School W I T C H S K E W L. Yeah, we reported a while back about the uh, digital inquisition going on on TikTok, and I recently lost another account. So you might find me at Uncle Birch two. At some point, it's all, it's kind of looking like I might get that account back. It says permaban, but when I try and sign into it, it says temporarily suspended. So I don't know. TikTok hasn't been clear about that. But at any rate, right around the corner, people, you got to get on this right now because it's January right now. It's January 5th right now and February 18th to the 20th, to the 20th 2022. Join the largest online magical conference in the world, featuring nearly a hundred witches and conjurers coming to you by live stream video from across the globe. Uh, watch live and watch on demand whenever you want. February 18th and 20th, uh, 2022, Brian Kane and Christian Day and the Hex Education Network present WitchCon online, featuring nearly a hundred witches. By nearly a hundred witches and conjurers from across the globe. Wait a minute. Let me read that again. We might have to talk to him. Wait. Hex Education Network present WitchCon Online. Wait. Brian Kane, Hex Education present WitchCon Online featuring nearly a hundred classes. Oh, okay. By nearly a hundred witches <laughs> and conjurers from across the globe ready to share their time-honored wisdom and witchery with beginners and advanced practitioners alike. 
WitchCon online presenters are the preeminent masters of the magical arts and hail from across the rainbow spectrum of occult and spiritual practices. Registration is limited to a thousand attendees and includes all live classes, rituals, and performances, as well as access to recordings of every class after the event has ended via our on-demand library, so you won't miss a single magical moment. Attendees and fans will love the live shopping in the virtual Vendorium, featuring powerful ritual tools, signed books, exquisite jewelry, and handmade spellcrafts. Our virtual meet and greet, this is probably maybe even the best part about the thing. Yeah. Our virtual meet and greet lets attendees and fans alike meet and chat with presenters live on Zoom. It's a great way to get to know your favorite teachers. WitchCon Online is live streamed on the Hex Education Network on Crowdcast, a web-based platform with no need to download an app. And check that out at witchcon.com. And since we're, we're closing in on the season, I'm going to bust through this list. The presenters for WitchCon 2022 in, include, and, but are not limited to, Brian Kane, Christian Day, A.C. Fisher, Aldag, Alexander Cabot, Alexis Ariando and Eric Labrado, Angel Griffin, Ashley Mortimer, Baba Teddy, Carrie O'Crow and Lori, Laura Luella, Carrie Ewers, uh, Carly Dwyer, Carolyn Kenner, Carolyn Tully, Cassandra Campbell, Kat Thagard, Charity Bedell, Claudia Valdez, Craig Spencer, Darcy Velez, Deborah Laurie, Diana Rachel, Dr. Angela Puka, Dr. Tracy Kennedy, Drago Vincenzo, Drago Ritual Drummers, uh, Eddie Massey, who we've had on the show, um, Eddie Scarfron, Elohim Lafar. Ellie Barnes, Ellen Everett Hopman, Father Sebastian, Fatima Moj, uh, Francis Billinghurst, Moj, Moj, Freya Bishop, uh, Georgie Michev, Gus Disrega, Hugon Saint Jack, um, Jacques Crivasses. James Devine, Jennifer Medway, John Corvus, Judy Ann Nock, Juliet Rose, uh, Kadrick Olson, Kenya Koviak, Crystal Madison, Lady Kate and Baba Teddy, Lady Rhea, Levi Rowland, Lilith Dorsey, Liz Dean, Lauren Morris, Madam Z, Mark Nakamp, Martha Moran Gonzalez, Melissa Jane Madara, Michael Carell, Michael Herxes, Miss Ada uh, Mu Muertetero, Yamil, uh, Mystic Dylan, Oberon Zell, Papa Hector, Pastor Phil Wyman, Patricia Telesco, Patty Negree, um, Penny Delina Bedard, Petrusia Finkler, Phyllis Curret, Papa Cap, Priestess Miriam, Rachel Patterson, Raven Digitalis, Rebecca Spirit, Richard Black Cat, Sean Wild, who we just had on the show, uh, Shanine Mitro, Shannon Marie Doust, Silver Ravenwolf, wow, Sarita Deste, Star Ravenhawk, Cinti Bohem, Tabitha Dial, Tarsh Sanchez, Taran S, Timothy Shaw, Thomas Prower, Tony Miruski, <laughs> uh, Tanya Brown, Witch Doctor Utu, and Yeshe Matthews. You know, look how long it took me just to say all that. You need to see all that. You need to get over to witchcon.com and we'll be uh, uh, bringing on presenters for uh, witchcon.com um, up until witchcon happens. 
Let's see who's in the chat room. Penny's in the chat room. I thought you'd be in there at some point. Hi, Penny. Uh, yes, if you follow us on Spreaker.com slash user slash Wittersons, you can get in the chat room. We are also found on uh, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, iHeartRadio, Tumblr, SoundCloud, and a bunch of other fucking places. We're all over the damn places. If if we're not on the place that you get your podcasts, um, then the place you get your podcast sucks. Um, is Wittershins short show tonight? We're gonna yep. play some songs and get the fuck out of here. Um, now this one, I'm gonna have to go out with um, the witches on TikTok. What we got going on on witch uh, witch talk or witches of TikTok is a digital. Uh, Inquisition. The Christians have organized to report the accounts of witches and get them deplatformed off of TikTok. And it, it's, you know, that's why Uncle Birch has like five different fucking accounts. Um, but now we have witches doing that to each other. We have witches and other practitioners doing that to each other. While somebody may have a pra different practice than you have, um, we have more in common then we have differences. And if you find yourself manipulating bones, stones, roots, rocks, uh, candles, oils, um, you name it, on a, a, a workspace to cause change in accordance with will, um, we will all burn at the stake together unless you learn about solidarity. We'll see you next week. Well, this is the longest session I have ever been in in my life, and my voice is about to fall apart, so I'm going to sing the last one, or the We Are. I bet if I was to make book right now about what that song was, I wouldn't make very much money. You're right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Which one is it? Well, all right. I mean, what that kind of <laughs> When the union's inspiration through the workers' blood shall run, there can be no power greater anywhere beneath the sun. Yet what force on earth is weaker than the feeble strength of one? But the union makes us strong. Solidarity forever. Solidarity forever. Solidarity forever. Who would lash us in the surf? The man would crush us with his might. Is there anything left to us but to organize and fight? For the union makes us strong. Solidarity forever. Solidarity forever. Solidarity forever. built the cities where they trade, dug the mines and built the workshops, endless miles of railroad laid. We stand outcast and starve amidst the wonders we have made, but the union makes us strong. Solidarity forever, solidarity forever, solidarity forever. Owned by idle drones is ours and ours alone. We have laid the wide foundation, built it skyward, stone by stone. It is ours not to slave in, but to master and to own, while the union makes us strong. Solidarity forever. Solidarity forever. Solidarity forever. They 
have taken untold millions that they never toiled to earn. But without our brain and muscle, not a single wheel can turn. We can break their haughty power, gain our freedom when we learn that the Union makes us strong. Solidarity forever. Solidarity forever. Solidarity forever. For the Union makes us strong. In our hands is placed a power greater than their hoarded gold, greater than the might of armies magnified a thousandfold. We can bring to birth a new world from the ashes of the old, for the Union makes us strong. Solidarity forever, solidarity forever, solidarity forever, for the Union makes us strong. Everybody has an AR-15